So hi guys, welcome to the MMA BJJ show. Uh, so obviously me, Stoomboy, as always, uh, joined by a very good friend of mine, a very special guest, Valmir Neto. Uh, so Valmir, um, I've known Valmir now for a, a good few years. Um, I know we spent some time at a seminar. Um, Valmir's always there. Anytime that, that I need a chat, I can always go to Valmir. We can have a chat. I know that uh, always very excited and very happy whenever I see Valmir. So, um, so yeah, we're going to touch on some stuff about Valmir's jiu-jitsu journey because uh, obviously it's been an extensive journey, not just through jiu-jitsu, but also MMA as well. I know that um, with the la well, the last time we spoke, uh, we had a good chat about your MMA, which was, uh, again, a fantastic journey. I think you'd went out to, I believe it was India, um, and did a, a tournament over in India, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll obviously hear a little bit about that and then just hear about Valmir's kind of plans for the future and so on, because obviously his own team, uh, VN team, is grown by the day and, yeah, some absolute killers in the VN team as well. So I'd say we'll hear a little bit about that as well. So Valmir, it's an absolute honour, sir, to have you on. How are you doing? So you hear me, Valmir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cut it off a little bit, but I can hear. My friends, thank you very much for having me here. You know, we meant to be doing that for a while, but we could never find the time. Our schedule is always like, you know, a way of each other. But it's very good to be here. It's very good to participate. I'm not really into um, do much interviews and stuff like that. I'm quite reserved. But like you mentioned before, we're very long time friends. So... Yeah, he's very he's very happy for me. It's very good to be here with you, my friend. Thank you. I know the last time we were going to speak, I think you'd went off to, I believe it was the Abu Dhabi Pro. Um, so I think you'd yeah. went over there. How did everything go over there for you? Well, everything was awesome, man. Like, training was very good. Competitions was very good. I went there. But unfortunately, I couldn't win. I got second place. I lost by a uh, referee's decision. The fight was 2-2, two, 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 mm -hmm. uh, two points each, two advantages each. But uh, that didn't go my way this time, you know. I was very, very sad and very, you know, like angry to myself because you can never leave it to the referee's hand, you know. Yeah. You always feel like you could be done a little bit more. You could be doing a little bit more, but... Uh, Unfortunately, that wasn't my time. I was scheduled to go there this year, but obviously with the pandemic, everything changed. So then they postponed the the, the tournament to February next year. Yeah. So uh, yeah. hopefully, fingers crossed, everything in the world settles down and then I'm able to travel and to do what I love, man, which is compete, man. Yeah, definitely, you know? definitely. And it's been a crazy time. I mean, uh, obviously the lockdown happened uh, March earlier this year, so we're about eight months in. Uh, so, I mean, how's the lockdown treating you? Well, man, like lockdown is... If I didn't have my son to look after him, I would go mad, man. I would go mad. I have a true old kid, and my wife works in, in the prison system. Yeah. So she's a key worker. So she's been working full time through this lockdown. So in my house, household, the only thing that changed was my routine because her routine is still the same. So if I didn't have my son to entertain me, to keep me busy, as I have every two years old kid can keep anyone busy, I think my lockdown would be worse, man, I gotta say. But, uh, Every now and then I do a bit of training with my wife. She's also purple belt, you know, and uh, we do a little bit of training. And yeah, man, that, 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 that's the way how it goes. I managed to get a lot of things in my house sorted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> things, that, things that I always leave. Yeah, I do another time. I do another time. And man, now I had a time to sort everything out, man. Like, my house is as clean as ever be, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, so, yeah, man. So, like, that, that's what I've been doing. One thing as well, I, I enjoy a lot. I enjoy a lot watching jujitsu. 
mm-hmm. in the way that I, 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 you're never going to see me watch any BJJ positions. I never watch any instructionals. That's not me. Mm-hmm. You know, one thing that I stop and watch and pay attention is competitions. Because I believe if somebody do a position or a move in the comp, that means the move is efficient. Yeah. So I can, you know, like add that to my game. So what I do, if I see something key interest, I rewind and watch again, rewind and watch again. So that's what I've been doing. I've been watching a lot of uh, this new, what they call modern jiu-jitsu. Oh. You know, all these warm guards and this variation from rail guard and stuff. So that's the beauty of our sport, man. You, you, you all the time, uh, you know, you were all the time learning. Yeah. You know, like never stop learning. And I think that's the beauty of jujitsu. You all the time have something to work on, you yeah. know. So, yeah, man, that's what I've been doing, obviously. Now I have my own academy, you know, like after all these years, teach I have my own place. So I can in a way concentrate my place also, which keeps me very busy. And you know, you know, bro, I was like, all the time you got something to do in the gym. Yeah. Like all the time there's something to replace, something to fix, you know. So yeah, man, that that's that's my lockdown. That's the way how my lockdown have been so far, man. Like it's yeah. been like a lot of indoors working, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I ain't gonna lie as well, brother. Whenever I have a, a time, whenever I'm bored in the way that I'm just in my house, you know, my house or the gym, so everything is like a closed place. Everything is like four walls and stuff. What I do, I get, I jump in my bike, man. I have a motorbike. So I jump in so my that, bike, yeah. put my headphones on, and then you know, go for a ride with a wind in my face and just try switch off of uh, of the daily basis routine, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I saw that as well. I saw that you were you were out on your bike a few times and you've been out. Because obviously anytime you go out on the bike, you, you take pictures and post pictures, so... <laughs> That's it, man. The bike is, the, is a good-looking bike, you know? So... Yes. If I post a picture of my good-looking bike next to me, nobody will see my ugly face. They all will see <laughs> the good-looking bike. And <laughs> I even got in my Instagram, my last picture, half of my face was covered, man. <laughs> <laughs> even my mom, even my mom said, you looking very good. I was like, of course, mom, you can only see my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and then what about you? I mean, I know that Yeah, and I know that you um you always love to travel about going to different jujitsu gyms and obviously seeing your own team going because obviously I know that me and you I think we met in Blackpool um for the first time. So I mean, how's it been for you? Have you have you still been able to keep in contact with your uh with your teams and so on throughout the UK? Uh, man, like, of course, like, I have my own team, which is the VNE team, but we are, we are in the check mark, you know, mm-hmm. check match is like, a, it's like, it's, 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 it's my team, is my family, you know, like everything that I want important in my, in my, in my career was alongside check match, you know, yeah. uh, but in the same time, because check match is a massive team. I have my own team inside Check Match, which is the, the, the people that teach under me. And, uh, man, I take care of them as much as I can yeah. in the way that, obviously, Jiu-Jitsu is very physical. You know, you, you got to be with them to show them, for them to feel what you mean, for them to understand your concepts. But nowadays, we have the technology, we have the face, we have FaceTime, we have Zoom, we have, like, Every, every, everything that you can do to make it together. Yeah. You know, so actually another day I spoke to Steve in Blackpool. Mm-hmm. You know, we had a chat, like how things going there. He also is doing Zoom classes. And I have a few different associations in the UK and also in Brazil. Yeah. So my way to be with them is like through, you know, social media, through 
you know, for uh, 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 video video calls, you know. And yeah. man, like uh, as much as 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 much bad as it is, is better for that to be happening now yeah. than twenty years ago. Yeah. Imagine yeah. that when you didn't have a phone, when you didn't have internet, how could you be, you know, linked to people in your way? Nowadays, if I want to see my family in Brazil, and 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 sure, I come from a big family in Brazil, man. Like my family is big and it's tight, you know. Like my 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 story is a little bit different of a lot of you know foreigners that come to the country, you know. Yeah. So I I keep my 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 family, you know, like close to me as much as I can, close to my family, you know, and everything is through. You know, FaceTime is through like video calls, you know. So the communication with the team itself is good, man. It's not the way how me and the team would like for me to see them personally, for me yeah. to speak to them personally, train with them. But it is better than if we didn't have like a, a video conference and stuff, you know. Yeah, definitely. And as you mentioned there, I mean, if something like this happened 20 years ago, it would have potentially killed jujitsu. Um, because I'd say that you you have things like you've got Zoom, you've got Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, you've got all of these things now that we didn't have 20 years ago. Um, so I'd say it's yeah. we're fortunate we have that at the moment. Um, and again, would you say that social media? Because again, when when you first started jujitsu, I mean, there was nothing, nothing at all apart from having videos and watching videos and things like that so do you feel that social media is very important now um for what we do i think i think social media had a huge huge impact in the jiu-jitsu evolution yeah you know you should i started training october 1998 oh. i was 13 years old 1998, I can't even remember, 1997, 1998, I can't even remember, it was a long time ago. However, I am from Belém, Pará, is where mm -hmm. the Gracie family is from, is where the Japanese Matsumaeda flew all the way to Brazil, that's the place and the state and the town that he, he, he introduced Jiu-Jitsu for the Gracie family. And the great the Grace family, when they, they moved from Scotland, from your place, they moved to Brazil, they moved to my state, to my place, yeah. you know, which is called Belém, Belém do Pará. Uh -huh. Belém is, is, is the city, Pará is the state. And uh, he, he, you know, he introduced the jiu-jitsu to the Grace family and stuff. And after that, they migrate to Rio, to all over the world. So for me be able to watch Jiu Jitsu in 1998, I would have to wait for one of my friends that traveled to Rio mm -hmm. and compete in the worlds or in nationals because the worlds used to be in Tijuca Tennis Club in yeah. Rio de Janeiro, yeah? So I had to wait for them to come back home with that small tape that they recorded from the camera yeah. to pass to an adapter so we could use it in the VHS. Yes, yes. So if I want to see something interesting, I had to rewind the tape, like <laughs> wait for a little bit to rewind it to watch again. And then saw something good again, rewind and watch again. So for the next comp, I could try apply there against the person. But mm -hmm. by the time that is the next comp, the person is already doing something different, <laughs> you know? So the evolution was very, very small. And I'm talking about within Brazil. Mm -hmm. Within Brazil. Brazil, as you know, is a massive country, you know? Um, the first tournament I went to compete in Rio took me four days and three nights to arrive in the bus. My. So from my hometown, I traveled for three nights and four days to be able to get in Rio. Mm -hmm. When I got in Rio, I got my ass kicked in the first round. And then I had to take the same the same journey. Three yeah. nights, yeah. four days in the bus to be able to get back to the gym. Mm -hmm. You know? 
So it was something like a crazy man, the way how that used to be, the way how it, it is now. Of course, there is that people that they live for social media. They are everything they do is on social media. If, if what they eat on social media, or what they live is on social media. I think in a way I am a bit older for that, you know. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy those things now here and there, but no all the time, you know, like imagine if I would post all the time that I am in the gym. Like yes. I'm in the gym every day all day. So <laughs> if I boy if I gotta post a training, tough training, I gotta pull her. Yeah. They talk about training all day and then they have nothing, nothing else to to <laughs> to add to the community, you know. So yeah. I believe that the social media was a very, very important tool to help develop jujitsu, but in the same time expose the fake ones. Yes. yes. So we have a saying where I come from that we were saying that the uh, os de verdade sabem quem são os de mentira. Mm -hmm. What means the real ones knows the fake ones. Yes. Yes. You know. So. Uh, I just filter that, man. I just filter all these people that, that they bring negativity or they, you know, they, they in the social media just to gain followers, fans. I don't like that, man. My followers, yeah. my fans, I gain with my jiu-jitsu, you know? I yes. gain training with everyone and compete as much as I can, you know? that That's the way how I do my talking away, you know? Yeah, But I, I answer your question, I believe that the social media is very important and a very good tool for the the development of jiu-jitsu, man. Right? Definitely, definitely. And then for you, I mean, we kind of touched on where you're from, where you start, uh, what, roughly when you started, but what was your, what was the thing that made you get into jiu-jitsu when you did? Man, my stories are like, in a way, is a funny story, you know, to tell. Uh, the reason that I started jiu-jitsu was because my dad. You know, that's that's the reason that I started. But no, because my dad supports me to do jiu-jitsu. It's not that. It's because I want to, in a way, fuck my dad up. <laughs> you know, like, um, my dad, back in the day, he used to have drinks and stuff and come home, beat my mom up, beat me up too. You know, like if I was going bad in school, there was no talking. There was just like, you know, like take the belt off and whip the shit out of me. You know, like a lot of my dad's frustrations, he used to, you know, he used to release me and my mom. Yeah. You know, all frustrations that he had at work and his daily basis, he used to, to you know, to be very abusive towards me and my mom at home. Oh. So uh, he was the villain, but in the same time, he was the hero. Because yeah. he's the one that brought the VHS tape for us to watch of UFC 1, UFC 2, UFC 3. Uh -huh. And then I saw the small guy beating up the bigger guys without yeah. punching them, without kicking them. Uh -huh. And also, I was like, "Caralho, man! If that small guy is beating up the big guys without to do anything, he's choking out everyone, he's breaking people's arm. I can do that as well, and I can defend my mom and myself of yeah. my 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 father's attack. Uh -huh. You know, so we always, even me and him, we always used to mess up in bed, like playing jujitsu and stuff. Have no clue of what we were doing." Uh -huh. But just doing to try to copy what Hoist and Gracie was doing, you know. Um, so when I was 13, I was almost 14 years old, October. I believe October 1998 is when I started. And it was no long after he came drunk at home once and beat the shit out of my mom. And not be funny, my mom is South America. My mom is a Latin. So yeah. she was mouthy as well, but that doesn't justify him to, you yeah. know, to, 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 to beat us up. So uh, time went past, I found somewhere where I could train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And in Brazil, we don't call Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, we just call Jiu-Jitsu. 
Yeah. And the coach there was a purple belt. And believe it or not, in Berlin, there wasn't any black belts. Uh-huh. I believe, actually, there was one black belt from another town that came to teach there. But uh-huh. he wasn't a local one. So then I start, I start uh, uh, training in this place with a coach called Alexander Quintela. He teaches in America nowadays as his Academy America. And the time went past. I went, I believe, eight to 10 months went past. Mm-hmm. And then my dad came with the same scenario. Crazy, wild, you know, beat my mom up. And then when I was like going the middle, like stop it, it went to me. Man, I can't remember the situation because the adrenaline, I believe, took over. Yeah. Everything that I remember is me being my dad's back, choking out on conscience, <laughs> you know? So that was like crazy because I never had the experience to do that. And I don't in my dad. Yeah. Then my mom was like packing out our stuff, like, let's go, let's go, let's go. But I was like, try support my mom. But in the, te- the same time, you think that I killed my dad. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? But no, then he starts coming back, but then we left. Me and my mom, we left. We went to my to my mom's brother's house. We stayed there for a couple of nights. And I have a sister as well, a little sister. Mm-hmm. But my dad never, like, touched her, never punched her or anything like that. My dad never mm-hmm. punched me too, but always whipped me with his belt, flip-flops, the yeah. well-famous and the famous Havana's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that hurts, man. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Leg, that hurts, man. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then man, funny, funny story. Since that day, he had arguments with my mom after with me, but he never touched his hand on me or my mom anymore. You know? Yeah. So, well, I never stopped training since I started, and all the time that was hard at home, there was arguments between them. They they split nowadays. They split like back then. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to be at home. So a long time I spent in the gym. And mm-hmm. man, in the gym, there wasn't kids' class. There wasn't a Guinness program. There was nothing like that, you know? Women's class. No, if you want to change, just jump in with everyone and do what everyone is doing. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I always was the smallest one. I always lost the lighter one. You know, like to be, to be, to be in the gym but uh it's funny because like in the same way i always like to compete i believe there was always something uh something with me that i enjoy the competition because i started jujitsu to in your way fight someone yeah i think that's the way how how i am you know mm-hmm. so i all the time find a way to to train in my town back then it was like two tournaments in one year yeah. One in the summer, one in the winter. That's it. Yeah. Everything yeah. else that you wanted to compete, you had to travel to Rio. Mm-hmm. You know, and flight tickets back then was way too expensive, man. So everything was about uh, was about take a bus or drive. You know, and I used to remember the first tournaments I went. I BJJF actually, but there wasn't I BJJF back then. That mm-hmm. was always CBJJ which means Confederação Brasileira de Jiu-Jitsu. It's the Brazilian yeah. Federation, which is, which IBJJF came from that federation. Yeah. So I used to travel and then, you know, go there and compete and man, lose in the first fight and then come back to the gym. My friends are like, ah, oh, how was the holiday? Did you <laughs> have a good holiday? Or you went all the way that you buy. That is an expensive T-shirt, which was the tournament T-shirt, isn't it? Yes, yes. That was an, uh, an expensive T-shirt to buy, isn't it? You had to go the way in Rio to get it. So that bastards, they, they used to take a mic out of me, you know? They used to take a joke of me. Yeah, yeah. They traumatized me, man, because all my, <laughs> my BJJ T-shirts, like the tournaments and stuff, I give to my mom or yeah. I give it to people in the gym. I don't like to use them. Yeah. I think because of that, you know. Yeah. But then, man, I telling you, one hundred percent of these people that used to take a make a joke of me, nowadays they like, they didn't achieve anything jujitsu, or they only do jujitsu for hobby. 
you know. Yeah. So all the time that I go back in the gym in Berlin, I make sure I train with the same people, you know. So yeah. I <laughs> I go like, look, <laughs> you guys still can make a joke of me. Look, how about now? <laughs> yeah, you know? definitely. <laughs> how about now, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's oh, brilliant. Yeah, man. Sure, I just, I just need to unlock my door. One second and Not 30 a problem, seconds sir. back, brother. Okay? Not a problem. 30 seconds I'm back, guys. Just need to unlock the door. One second. So, guys, obviously, you can ask questions throughout the call as well. So, um, any questions that anybody has for Valmir, um, anything at all. I mean, Valmir's here. Valmir will answer anything at all. Um, so, yeah, just pop any questions on. Obviously, you're on Twitter. You're on Facebook as well. Um, and, obviously, on YouTube. So, any format that you guys are watching on, then, as I say, just drop a... Uh, comment in, and we'll try and get around to all of the questions as we go, as we through, go through. So, so. yes, my friend, I'm back. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Brazil, I mean, obviously, you mentioned about the traveling. I mean, you're traveling for almost a week back and forward. So, you're talking about three days, four nights back and forward. So, I mean, obviously, now, I mean, we've got the luxury. I mean, you can pretty much fly anywhere in the world um, f within a day. Um, yeah. I know that when I went to America, I think I was yeah. flying for about, overall, about 16 hours to get to California um, wow. and obviously go and train out there. So, but obviously, I mean, you're talking about Brazil back in the day, three days there and back. So, obviously, three days there, three days back. So, I mean, how was the traveling? Because uh, obviously we know that traveling in jiu-jitsu, everybody does it. So, how was traveling almost a week back and forward? I will be specific and straight to the point. It was shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was actually shit. It was three days that you didn't have no shower. Mm -hmm. Three mm -hmm. days that you eat whatever the bus is stopped to eat. And man, the motorways back in Brazil 20 years ago. Now this is, is shit still. Yeah. 20 years ago was horrendous, man. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So that wasn't nice at all, at all. And you one funny story. One of my trips to travel, I went to fight the North and Northeast tournament in a place called São Luís do Maranhão, which is Northeast Brazil. Mm -hmm. it was 12 hours to go, 12 hours to come back. See, that wasn't that, that, that far. And it's funny <laughs> because in the airplane, it takes 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the way back, my bus got, you know, they got robbed. Mm -hmm. There was four guys with guns. They, they they were in the bus. So in the middle of the journey, in the evening, they stopped the bus. They say, look, that is, that is like we are robbing it. So they put a gun in people's face, gun pointed to me. But I was smart. I had a nice watch. I... I I took my watch up and I put it like in between the seats alongside of my card. Yeah, so all, yeah. all they got was like 10 quid that I had and I didn't have no card or anything like that. Man, I was 15, 16. Yeah. You know, very young. So, uh, yeah, and there was always this adrenaline, man. Like, do they will rub the bus? Do the, the tire will go flat? We will break it down. So the adrenaline for the tournament is start <laughs> when, <laughs> when it starts the trip, you know. Yeah. So when yeah. you get to the tournament, you were like, "Fuck, oh, man, I'm tired, man. Like <laughs> I've been doing too much already, you know." Definitely. So, uh, yeah, man. That was like that was like no no good, man. And yeah. then the first trip I done to compete was the that I went in the air, in the airplane. It was in the world in 2003. Mm -hmm. So that's the first time I took an airplane. My mommy paid the flight ticket in 12 installments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we could afford for me to go and, and travel, you know? 
Yeah. And then the first fight, uh, my opponents didn't make weight. Then the second fight, I fought Jose Aldo, the one that right. fights in the UFC and stuff. I was yeah. purple belt there. Was a very good fight, very good fight. I lost, unfortunately. I we started the fight. I pulled guard. He passed. Then I reposited. Swept. So there was three two, and then I try pass, and he tried sweep, but nothing happened. So I end up losing the second fight. Mm-hmm. But obviously, the first fight was like, uh, you know, the guy didn't make weight. Man, I was so happy to win yeah. a match, even that I didn't fold. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and man, I used to be so proud of it. I don't know why. Maybe because all the time that I travel, I lost in the first fight. Yeah, so that was the only time. But that I used to do when I was like, I used to be that happy when I was like 14, 15. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Nowadays, I see people fucking they they 25, 30 years old. They 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 win tournaments without fighting anyone. Yeah, and man, they yeah. are celebrating. They call themselves champion, this champion, that. I mean, like, that doesn't make no sense, man. How can mm-hmm. you call yourself champion if you didn't fault anyone? Yes. So, what yes. you fought against your weight? What did you fault against? Be able to pay for your trip to go and fight, but there was no one. So, mm-hmm. no, man, no, 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 no. And that sometimes that happened to me actually last year. When I went to fight AJP, the, the Abu Dhabi Federation, the UAE Federation in Amsterdam. I mm-hmm. wasn't actually Amsterdam, it was the Netherlands in a place called Almer. And I fought, I, I, I went to fight, I fought in the weight class, like in higher weight class. Um, but then my opponent make weight and everything, but in the fight day, he did an up. Yeah, yeah. You know, he didn't turn up for some reason. Uh, he made the weights the day before and the UAE Federation, the way in is the day before. So he made the weights the day before and stuff, but in the, in the fight day, he didn't, he didn't show up. So I was offered to get my my, my medal. You know, yeah. it was like, I come to the porch, collect my medal. I was like, no, yeah. I don't want to yeah. know. Medal, I didn't fall. Mm-hmm. Why am I going to get a medal if I didn't fall? It's like, Ah, but there's no your fault that your opponent didn't show up. I was like, yeah, but I didn't fault to earn this medal. Yeah, ah, but you need yeah. to get it now. No, no, I'm not getting it. So if you want to give me something, give my registration fee for the next tournament. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. the guy didn't show up, like, get, let me compete for free next tournament. Yeah. And the organizer yeah. was like, do you know what? Yeah, man, no problem. Yeah. Your name will be up for the, the, the next week and two weeks after, one week after was in England, the British Nationals. Yeah. You know, so I went to fight them the folks that free because I didn't want to there. I didn't want to get a medal without fight. You know, yeah. that, that, that doesn't be, that doesn't exist, man. Knowing my, knowing my, in my way to see Jiu Jitsu, you know, I don't, I honestly don't agree with that, but people is entitled to do whatever they want. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you notice that as well. I mean, it happens quite a lot whenever you... It's happened to me before. Um, I think it happened once. I turned up to a competition. There was there was three of us in the division, so me and two other guys. Um, I turned up on the day, and I was the only person there. Um, and I tried to get them to put me into the adult, but the adult had already started because I fight masters, masters two at that time so i tried to get them to put me into the adult division but they, they'd already started the adult division but they let me go in the adult for mm. the absolute so so i was able to go in and do that um but yeah i mean it's it's horrible it's horrible right. to to go travel all that distance to then turn up and your opponent or opponents don't turn up at all so um so yeah i mean it's a horrible thing i mean as a people a lot of people I've been there. A lot of people have done that. Um, some people celebrate, obviously, the fact they got a medal. Um, as you know, it could be for different reasons. It could be maybe stuff that they were going through to get that medal was fantastic. Or uh, it could be for their Instagram post. Um, so to post it the is, picture of the medal. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, isn't it, sure? Like, you will see people... 
uh, you will come across in life in the gym with people they have the they have their different reasons to train. I, yeah. I like to say that in the way that you will have people walking in through your door in the gym, signing up to be world champions. Yeah, they yeah. want to compete. They want to win the world. There will be people that signing up to your gym because they just want to train. Yeah. They just work five days a week. They have their house. They have their family. They just want to escape. There's people that will sign up to train with you because they want to belong to somewhere. They mm -hmm. want to belong to something. They want to have a team. They want to have a family behind them. Yeah. There's people that will sign up for your gym just to tell people that they train. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. There will be people. Look, I'm already in the sick for one. There will be people that they will turn up to your gym. They will sign up just to post in the social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is people that will come to train with you just because they have no one. They have yeah. nobody. And they know the gym is what they've been looking for for their life. It's a family environment. Yes, It's a yes. nice place to be. And there is something that, you know, I, I, personally can't judge anyone i can't mm -hmm. tell you that the person is is right that one is wrong this one is more right than that one no mm -hmm. who am i to say that people have different uh different approaches to jujitsu you know yeah. and me as a coach my job is to 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 try and make all these people achieve what they want yeah i have people who sure that they spend all day in their office working and now working from home, they spend all day at home by themselves. Yeah, yeah. You know, all they want is coming up to the gym. They don't care if they're gonna they're gonna kick people's ass or if they're gonna have their ass their ass kicked. They don't care. They just want to train. They just want to be with people. Yes. So yes. I believe there's nothing wrong with that, you know. And I believe everybody have their own, you know, approach to jujitsu. When I started compete as well. For a long time in my journey, I was competing to impress my parents. I was competing to impress my girlfriend. I was competing to impress my friends. And guess what? I never ever could achieve anything that I achieve now with that mindset. Yeah, yeah. Jiu-Jitsu, MMA is a such hard sport Mm -hmm. That you cannot do it to please anyone else by yourself. Yeah, yeah. If you're not doing that to please yourself, if you're not doing that for yourself, at some point you're gonna quit. Yeah. At some point you're gonna hate what you're doing. At some point you're not gonna hear anything to do. You don't want anything anymore to do with jujitsu or with uh, MMA, whatever, because you are doing to please people. You are doing to impress people. Yeah. The moments yeah. that was like, fuck, man, this is a solo journey. Even though that you have your, your team, you have your friends, and all, but that's you. It's only you fighting them on the mats. It's just only you fight on that cage. Yeah. So doing that, your, your, your journey will have a time to end. Uh -huh. That will have a time to end. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, uh, and everything that I achieved, my, my important titles was after that discovery was after me to understand that was for me, not for anyone else. My friends will always be my friends regardless. My mom, my dad, my my missus, they will always love me regardless if I win a jiu-jitsu tournament or not. Yeah. Or if yeah. I'm not. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's when everything starts changing in my head, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And then for you, when did the when did the move to Checkmat happen then? So did that happen back in Brazil or did that happen when you came over to the UK? Right. When I first came over, Checkmat didn't exist. Yeah. yeah. There was no Checkmat. No. Nothing. Checkmat wasn't even a plan or anything. Yeah. I come from uh, a team that's called Broca Fight Team. Mm -hmm. And Broca is not just my professor but also a very close friend of mine he he's been like together with my my cousin which is very close of me fernanda 
for yeah. 15 years. So he was always in the family and stuff. But when I started training, they weren't together. So, and Brock was like a blue belt back then. So I started training with Alexandre Quintel, eventually Marquinhos. Um, and then I had the decision to come to the UK, you know. When I first came here, I was working <laughs> in the parliament back in my town. I right, used right. to work for one of the MPs there. So, man, basically, I used to hate to work, you know. Like, yeah. lunchtime and the evening, I always used to go to the gym and train and stuff. In the same time, I had a relationship which I hated, too. <laughs> I was trapped into it. So I didn't like my job. I didn't like my house. You know, the only thing I liked was my jiu-jitsu. Yeah, yeah. And I always had that. You no, know, I want to see the world. I want to do jiu-jitsu for a living. But, you know, back then, like, that, that wasn't possible. That was nothing. Or everything that we see nowadays, that wasn't there back then. We're talking about 20 years ago, man. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um. So, one of my friends that used to train with me in a gym called North Fight, mm -hmm. uh, he moved to the UK. Yeah. So, then we were always talking the phone, and there used to be that phone calls after 11 o'clock at night, which was cheaper, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. see how it's like. <laughs> so, we used to talk, and then he was like, man, why don't you try coming up here and stuff? I give you a support, you know. Uh, there, is, there is always somewhere, someone to do private classes and stuff. And he was a black belt teaching in London Fight Factory, yep, which yep. is run by Luis Manchina. Uh -huh. Manchina, Luis back then was a purple belt. Uh -huh. Actually, a fresh purple belt. So I got four weeks holiday back in Brazil from, my, from the parliament. I like to say that, isn't it? Because it sounds like I was important back in Brazil, isn't it? it sounds like, God, I don't know, that was clever. Bullshit, I was not clever. I just knew people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not, you know, I just knew people. They got me the job with that. So I was, yeah. I was like, no, man, I got a holiday. I will try. And my partner back then, she was... She was like, no, go, go and try, you know, like whenever everything works, that you bring us over and stuff. But yeah. when I left there, I was like, I'm not going to bring you over, woman. I want you to, <laughs> to carry on life and then leave me alone here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah, so I came, man. And I came with, I, I can easily remember there was 180 pounds and a backpack. Mm -hmm. I came to spend three weeks with 180 pounds and a backpack and a small suitcase and hand one. Yeah. So then my friend was teaching in London Fights Factory. He was associated to Braza. Yeah. Yeah. Braza came after alliance team split so there yeah. was a massive uh, 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 split in alliance where the main competitors in alliance left i'm talking about leo vieira rico vieira rodrigo comprido uh, roberto traven like people that used to be legends people yeah. they used to be legends back then and people that I always look up to people that when I started training, they went the cover of the magazines. Yeah, yeah. You know? So then they split, and then they opened this team called Braza. Uh -huh. But man, that and, and when I came, I was with Broca. Broca is the one that graded me from white to black belt, or to blue, from blue, yeah. From blue to black, because when I started, I had like orange belt, yellow belt, because I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I got all the way through to my black belt with him. But then when I came here, I was like, Broca, you know my situation. You know I like compete. You know I like train. And I'm going there to do jiu-jitsu. Uh -huh. For me to represent BFT, I will be alone. I will have no one. And my friend that is in Braza, he's giving me a support to that. And his name is Rodrigo Cabral. 
I don't know if you'll be watching that, but if, if he's watching that, my brother, all the best to you. Miss you, my man, that I hope to see you soon in Texas. Um, he used to teach him. He used to be the head coach of that gym as a black belt. So then I was talking to Brock, and then I, I explained Brock's situation. And Brock was like, my friend, go and look for what is best for you. I never forget that. Look for what is best for you, you know? <laughs> If you're gonna be with Braza, be with Braza. If you're gonna be with your friend Rodrigo, but I know you're not gonna last over six months. So it's all good. You've got to have a new team for six months and then you will come back. Yeah. Because it's sure that life I had back home was a decent life, man. I had my own house, I had my own car. <laughs> like, like I said, I came from a decent family, you know. Like my east my story to move abroad was very different of a lot of immigrants, you know. Yeah. Yep. Like I had a good life back in Brazil, but I didn't want to be part of that, that life. That I didn't want to be in that bubble. I want to go for my life. I want to do yeah. what I'm doing now, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he, he was like, he said, like, do it. But in the same time, he was like, no, nah, you're not going to last that. No, <laughs> because he didn't believe in me, but because the life that I had, he was like, he's not going to go in that fucking washing up or you know to get treated um, well when he has everything he here well, why is he doing that for it's just an adventure so he's yeah. not gonna last more than six months yeah yeah and man three days in the uk i start to work mm -hmm. in the gym you know you meet a lot of people so the guys was like i have a job for you you don't yeah. need to speak no English. Just go in there and washing up. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I went. So what went to the back of the restaurant, start to washing up, and work like crazy. And I still doing my training, but then there was like I had to pay for, for my debt that I made before I travel, like flight tickets, which was very expensive. Yeah, a, a lot of things around it, so I had to pay for it. So mm -hmm. I had to work like hard and then yeah. I was working there and then somebody finally get, got me a job as a fisherman mm -hmm. and the sure that is with zero English. Yeah. Zero, zero English, you know? So then somebody got me a job as a fisherman and I don't even eat fish. I, I <laughs> in fact, I hate fish. <laughs> But man, you gotta work, you know. You gotta yeah, do what you gotta yeah. do. Uh, so I went to that to work. Everything lasts a month. Yeah. All these other jobs last me a month. I start with two private students doing oh. private classes. That my friend Louis was too busy to do the classes. Yeah. So yeah. he gave it to me. And man, for one month I worked in the UK, and then. Oh. After that, I haven't worked since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I do is jiu-jitsu, man. All I do full-time. And I don't do nothing else. I don't have a hobby. I don't have a secondary job. I don't have nothing but jiu-jitsu. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm very proud that you say that because I met a lot of people when I came that did jiu-jitsu securities. They used to be restaurant managers they always use, had another job where yeah. i was like if i am in the uk i only gonna do jujitsu if jujitsu yeah. cannot pay my bills and then it's time for me to go back home yeah but within a month i was able to provide for me to provide for for my family back in brazil for jujitsu yeah. you know and 10 years went past and here i am talking to you yeah. my brother <laughs> definitely definitely well that was similar to to marcos I mean, when <laughs> when i spoke to marcos about him and and because i know that we me and marcos speak a lot at the moment especially about the lockdown and then marcos uh, is always saying well he can't go out and get a job because he has no skills um the only skills he has is jujitsu so he said he can't go out and get a job as doing whatever because he, he just can't do it. Um, so that's why jujitsu for him is his life. Um, so again, that sounds very, very yeah. similar to you. I mean, jujitsu is your life. Um, obviously, you can go and do yeah. other things, but 
I would always fall back on Jiu Jitsu. I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to lose my focus. Uh, people always ask that, especially when I go back to Brazil. Neto, are you rich yet? Are you rich yeah. yet? Yeah. Are you rich? You got a lot of money. Man, I am no rich. I mm-hmm. never was. I believe I will never be. Mm-hmm. But I don't change my life for nobody's life, man. I yeah. do if I do what I love, and mm-hmm. I wake up every day happy to go to the gym to train to see my friends that to train hard to sweat. Yeah. You know, yeah. I love my life, man. I love mm-hmm. love my life, and through jujitsu, I go to provide for me for my family. I met my wife through jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had I met my family my, in a way because one thing is the family that you're born into. The mm-hmm. other thing is the family that you choose to your life. Yes. And the family yes. that I chose for my life is open from jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. I believe I only have one friend in the UK that doesn't train jiu-jitsu. One. Yeah. Right, I promise right. you, sure, one. Yeah, and that's the friends that I see pretty much every week because the only thing he doesn't ask me is about jujitsu. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we we get together, we play Xbox, we play like UFC, we play FIFA, but there yeah. is no that jujitsu connection where sometimes you need to switch off, otherwise you go crazy. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, apart of it, everything everything is related to jujitsu. Is 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 around jujitsu. Mm-hmm. So man, I am no rich, but my life is the best life. Yeah, my yeah. life is the best life. And through jujitsu, brother, I got everything. I everything I have. Like I said, I have my wife. I have my family. I have an amazing son. I have my own house. I have my own academy. You mm-hmm. know, and everything is through jujitsu, man. So the dream that I had like 10, 12 years ago is mm-hmm. materializing now. After mm-hmm. all these years, you know, so I see people. I want to teach you jiu-jitsu. I want to do this. I want to do that. You need to work hard yes, to do it. Yes. Yeah. You know, and it's no a race. It's no a sprint. It's a marathon. Yes. Yes. You know. Yeah, man. That's 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 it, man. That, that yeah. that's that's what jiu-jitsu has given me so far. Definitely. And then you, I mean, you got your black belt now, two thousand six. So you've been about 14 years now as a black belt, so... October 2006 from Broca, you know, and uh, all my stripes I got with him since, and I am entitled to my fourth degree black belt. Yeah. But I haven't done it that yet. I haven't done it that yet. I haven't got it yet because I'm actually waiting to see Broca or, or Rico, I would say Ricardo, like we're talking about, like we, you you asked about the check match. Yeah. So when check match, when when Braza was was on, when I came here was Braza. But then in Braza, there was too many teams for no many Indians, if that makes sense. Is that the way how you guys say, right? Yes, yes. There was too many powerful people in the team, too many world champions that wanted things to be done the way how they want it. Yes, yeah. So, you know, things not going to last this way. So mm-hmm. then Rico and Leo, Rico Vieira and Leo Vieira, the brothers, Ricardo and Leonardo, they decide to step out of Braza and to open their own association, which is Chekma. Yeah, but I was always very close to Rico, mm-hmm. to Ricardo, and the Ricardo was like, "Man, we are leaving Braza. If you want to carry on with Braza, you know, by the all means, you good. You can carry on, but we are open another one. We haven't got the name yet. Yeah, so it's yeah. up to you." I was like, "Man, I don't give, I don't give a damn for the name. I'm with you, Ricardo. Whatever yeah. you go, I am with you." Mm-hmm. And Broca, like I mentioned, he always supports that. And that's something that I'm very blessed yeah. and very honest, you know, is you for you to, to leave one gym, to leave one academy, to leave one team, you don't mm-hmm. need to leave it from the back door. 
You yeah. can always yeah. leave it from the same dot that we walked in. And if you do that, you 100% you always be welcome back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I done. But no longer, as well, no longer after me being here, four weeks after my friend got deported back to Brazil. Right, right. His visa, he overstayed his, his visa. So he mm -hmm. got caught in the train station or something. They sent him back. So yeah. in a way, I was like, fuck, man, I'm by myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not that supports that person that talks English that does the translation for me to <laughs> to help me out. And there's no that anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I had to do what I got to do. Like, you know, a lot of mimics. Yeah. All that, like when you don't speak the language, that's the rescues you got. Yeah. So then yeah. they open the check match and and man, I'm with them since I I'm with them before before check match. I'm with them when it was Brazza. Mm. And then I'm with them when they created check match and I'm with them since, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I I love I love Czech match man I love Czech match Ricardo Vieira is 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 a very close friend of mine and someone that I always look up to him as a competitor and yeah. nowadays I can call him my friend I can call him my brother we speak weekly you know and uh, yeah man and I learned so much I grew so much as a competitor as a fighter since I I joined Czech match you know. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, man, that's that's the way how my link with Czech match started, you know. Nice, nice. Czech match is good. I mean, Marcos, I know Marcos comes down to uh, uh, train with Marco Canya and all the guys down there. Um, so I know Marcos used yeah. to come down every, I think yeah. it was every second Thursday. Um, and the reason Marcos started coming down was I think he went to a competition and he didn't do very well and the first person he phoned was marco canya to say i need help and marco's like yeah come down so so that was how marcos my coach marcos nardini started coming down and training with um obviously yeah. the the guys down there so uh and yeah i mean everybody i ever speak to um about checkmat i've got a lot of very good friends from checkmat um throughout the uk um always hold checkmat in high regards um and even like so for you as a coach and various other guys that are in checkmat they're always held in high regard um so it's great to have people like checkmat coming in um and changing the game because checkmat have uh, over the last number of years have changed the jiu-jitsu game um so do you mm. feel that'd be the same way as well so Checkmat changed from what the old jiu-jitsu to obviously Checkmat coming in and now obviously the modern jiu-jitsu coming in. Checkmat came and changed completely the competition scenario all over the world. Let's not go that far. Let's talk about, let's talk about the best and the most accomplished jiu-jitsu fighter there. He's yeah. also on Guinness Book. He's Marcos Bruchesha. Yeah. You know, he is obviously our main competitor. And that shows the power of the team, the power of Czech match. We have no just a lot of world champions, but we have the world champion, the most accomplished jiu jitsu guy that ever step in a competition. Yeah. So, Check match don't just change the way how I compete, mm -hmm. but also the way how the world, the entire world compete. Yeah. Because if you have someone doing something good and he's beat everyone, we need to train harder. We need to try to study his game to try beat him with a strategy. So that makes every other team to mm -hmm. get better, to improve. Yeah. You know, so I can easily say the biggest titles I got in my, my career, the best titles I got in my car career was all under the check match flag. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the competition mindset that, that the team has, the strategy that the team has. Sure, brother, 
if I talk, if I sit down next to Léo Vieira mm -hmm. or Rico Vieira to talk, I'm learning. Yes, yeah. I am learning. You know, these guys are in another level, man, then I hope one day I'm able to achieve it. But the way how they see Jiu-Jitsu, the way how they understand in Jiu-Jitsu is something else. Yeah, is, yeah. is another level. You know, so yes, man, definitely. But that has to do with Leo and Hiko. Mm -hmm. They were the ones that was they were always competitive. They are the ones that understand the game. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I I I put that all down to these two, man. Yeah. And talking quick about Marco, Man, I can tell you, you know, when we talk about a family that you choose in life, that you met in life, that they become your family, Marco is, is one of them. Yeah. We know each other since we both had nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Since he came up here with nothing, just his gi like I did, his gi and his belt, so he's saying, and we always were together, we always talk, we talk. I wouldn't say daily because it becomes a little bit homo, isn't it? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would say we talk a lot, you know, we talk a yeah. lot. And uh, with me and him running Check Match UK, mm -hmm. we need that. We need that friendship. We need that family ship, you know, and yeah. we have that. Yeah. And Marcos Nardini is a such talented fighter. He's yeah. a very, very good jiu-jitsu player, you know? Mm -hmm. Very strong and flexible and sneak with his things that he had nobody else better to be under but Marco. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's in very good hands and they both are very good training for each other. They did similar weight. And yeah. to be honest, they, they are similar style too. Yeah. You know, so it's actually good to see them train. You know, yeah. it's actually good to, to, to have the opportunity to train with them, man. And, uh, yeah, I think that was a big step up in Marcos Nardini's journey yeah. to join us and, you know, to be trained with us because he's a competitor, if that makes yes. sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we you noticed know? that. I mean, so, yeah, man. We, yeah, I mean, we noticed that. Straight away, I mean, as I said, he went, I think it was Paris, I'm sure he was in Paris, he did the IBJJF Paris, and then he, as he straight away, when he was on his way to the airport, he just left the venue, and he was on the phone to Marco Canya straight away, um, and then from then, he started going down and training, I think he was down training maybe a few times, and then he did, um, I think it was a competition in Germany at IBJJF, he went out, he won double gold. Um, the next competition, he won double gold. Um, and he just kind of went on and on from there. And that was all. And again, he, he mentions uh, that's all thanks to Checkmat. Um, he said he, he put chances are he wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for, obviously, hooking up with you guys at Checkmat. Yeah, man. And I'm telling you something. If there's something that Checkmat likes, these competitions... Yes, we enjoy yes. that. That that's the way that I believe. That's why I get along so well mm -hmm. with the team, with the the head coaches. Is because I'm a competitor myself, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a competitor myself. I enjoy, man. I'm not doing for to get more students to lose the students. I don't get to impress my. I don't do that to impress anyone else. But me, I enjoy that. I enjoy yeah. that adrenaline. I enjoy that atmosphere. You know. And check match is the same, so I think that's why we got this link so strong yeah. and so nice at the same time, because we love the same. We love jiu-jitsu, yeah. we love competing, you know? Definitely, definitely. And then you have, I mean, we spoke about your own team, the VN team. Um, so you've got a number of uh, kind of affiliations throughout the UK, as I mentioned, um, and Brazil. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, I met you in um, Scooby Jiu-Jitsu in Blackpool. Uh, so I think that was the first time I'd met you. Um, and I think that was around about 2015. Um, so about five years ago. And at that time you no, had... Oh, you're joking. Yeah. 
2015. Wow, so, that long ago, brother. Yes, yes. Wow. I'll tell you why, because I was, this was, I was just a fresh blue belt at the time. Um, and I was doing competition. Tell me, tell me that so you got your brown belt already. Not yet. No, 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 not yet. No, I had, uh, I originally was Gracie Baja. Then I had to move from Gracie Baja, went to Marcus's. So obviously I understand when you move to a new gym, you have to start again at the bottom, okay, and then work your way up. So, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. the coronavirus came, so which has kind of ruined everybody's journey over the last kind of eight, nine months. So, so yeah, I mean, purple belt's coming, purple belt's coming, but... Yeah, what? I mean, I, so you haven't got your belt here. Nah, nah, but it's no. my own fault. <laughs> Listen, it's my own fault. Um, so it's my Boy, fault. Sure. I mean, no, let's step it up, brother. Let's step it yes. up. Let's get this. Whenever you get a purple belt, I come along as well. I will come through this every morning. <laughs> You know, for sure, man, for sure. Just like Khabib say, send me location. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no, I did. I spoke to Marcos. I mean, Marcos, obviously, I, I speak with Marcos again regularly. Um, and the Purple Belt, I mean, I went through a time where I wasn't attending classes as much due to work and so on. So, so it's me. Obviously, mm. I didn't put in enough time because you're, you're going to get your belt with the time you spend on the map. So, so yeah, yeah I mean, purple but please, belt. Sure it's, don't be, don't be one of the statics. Yeah. That no. you go like, ah, everybody get the blue belts. They stop. Please don't do it. Brother, no, yeah? definitely not. I know definitely how much not. you love the jiu-jitsu to do that, man. You yes. can't do that, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that was, uh, what, five years ago I met you. Um, and, uh, yep. Scooby Jiu Jitsu. I mean, at that time you had um, Scooby Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, I mean, obviously you had Diff. Diff, obviously a brown belt under you. You've got Steve, Ethan, Julie as well. Julie, um, Julie at that time was doing the BJJ twenty four sevens. In fact, it was Julie that invited me over because obviously me and Julie very good friend, friends through the competition. Oh, yeah. So, so she Julie invited Jean, me. She's too. amazing, man. She's amazing. Yes. Yes, so, so she invited good, me man. down. That's good. And you see how, how much it's bring us together, isn't it? Yes. You know yes. someone that know that next thing you see, we all like together in a way, you know? So yes. that, that's the yes. beauty of our sport as well, isn't it? Yes, yes. And then we, yeah. we met again. We met a few times, different competitions and stuff like that. And then uh, I think one yes. of the last times I seen you was down at Tiago's in Berwick. Um, obviously, we did the seminar. I think Chiagos. you were there. But, yeah, that's so, what I was gonna mention. I remember the last time we were there. I trained with you as well. I went there for a seminar. I done some rounds with you. I believe I trained with your son as well. DJ, you know? yeah, DJ. And, and both of you, man, were very talented, very nice as well. Because that's the thing. Um, sure, I I like people. They are nice, mm -hmm. but in the same time, they. They train hard. Yes, yes. Listen, man. The results, if you win, if you lose, I don't care. Mm -hmm. What I'm after is people to, to train with you and they train hard. Yeah. I enjoy training hard. I enjoy, yeah. like, hard roles and stuff. But then we go for a beer. Yes, Do you yes. Know I mean? We try to choke each other out. We try to <laughs> take each other's arms or limbs up. Yeah, yeah. But then we go for a beer. Definitely. You know, and that's the beauty of the sports, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, back then, we didn't go for a beer. We went for a coffee. Am I went right? Went for a coffee, yes, yes. <laughs> so, yes that was I when you... I don't want to advertise any company here, but Costa <laughs> Coffee was very good. <laughs> definitely, definitely. That, that was when me and you were chatting about, obviously, your MMA. I mean, you'd went over to, um, I think recently before that, you'd went to, was it India? Um, and you did a, oh, an MMA me, competition. Yeah. So I, I remember you talking about that. that. You was saying, a crazy experience, man. Yes. <laughs> so obviously, tell us a little bit about that then. So how did uh, how did that all come about for you then? Man, that's the thing. Like MMA, my life was something that I always enjoy. Uh -huh. I enjoy watch MMA. I enjoy fight MMA, but I hate train MMA. Yeah. I yeah. hate the atmosphere that you can find the MMA show. 
man, it's too much egos around. Me yeah. coming from jiu-jitsu, where you can see egos, but no as exposed as the easy MMA. Yeah. You know, yeah. like people are friendly, people talk, people is that you do the job because they are like, it's different, man. In MMA, I never liked to that. However, yeah, I started my MMA journey or career, however you want to call, without any MMA training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am old school for that, man. Hoisy Grace style. <laughs> Yeah, Put yeah. the hands up, do the front kick, and then see what, <laughs> see what <laughs> happens, you know? So, man, I had I had, um, I had an opportunity here. I had, before, India was like, ah, they might do tournaments in India. They might take the guys from grades and to fight. Mm -hmm. So, poor, just make sure you watch out for that. But I started MMA just so I could train, fight, and they understand the game so I could pass to my students. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's the reason I started. And the MMA was never... I always had the dream to have to be a world champion. Yeah. I, But I never had the dream to be in the UFC or to be a UFC champion. No. Yeah. You know, if someone asks you or asking me, do you want to be in the UFC? Yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. <laughs> but you know something that I worked on for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So I start, I start, and and I was like, I'm not gonna train in stand up, I'm just gonna train jujitsu. I literally want to see how far jujitsu can take me this game. Yeah, yeah. You know, um I done seven fights in total, mm -hmm. you know. And I had five wins and two losses. Five wins was first round submission. Mm -hmm. Two losses was decision. Yeah, yeah. When I went to India, I had an, an MMA fight before in Troxy, UC MMA. Mm -hmm. I was replacing someone that didn't fault. But mm -hmm. David O'Donnell offered me a good money, and I always in chat with a, a, David O'Donnell back then and stuff. David O'Donnell do, does UC MMA and WC MMA yeah. and trucks and circus starving nowadays, I believe. Mm -hmm. So then he was like, No, look, Neto, I know you're flying to India, but there's this opportunity here. Do you want to have a fight? Uh, someone that meant to be fighting this guy. He, he, uh, he got injured, so he pulled out like Wednesday. The fight was on Saturday. Yeah. And one thing is short, I always keep on weight and I'm always training. Yes, yes. Brother, I didn't throw a single punch before it. I didn't. Mm -hmm. But I went to fight. The guy's name was, I believe, Neil. So the fight was good. First round finish. Mm -hmm. But then that was Saturday. Monday, I have this trip back, I uh, this trip booked to India, yeah. to New Delhi, for an event called Super Fight League. Yes, yes. So then they offer me two fights contract to that, <laughs> you know. But the thing is, it was like um, the Turf House. It was yeah. one week, one fight, the following week, another fight straight away. So let's put it this way. I done one fight on Saturday in England. Then I flew to New Delhi on Monday. Yeah. I fought in England on Saturday. I flew to New Delhi on Monday. I fought there again on Friday. Uh -huh. The guy that I fought in England, no time to prepare for him because it was short notice. Yeah. In India, they do that on purpose. You don't know who you fight until the way in. Yeah. Yeah. So in the weigh-ins, I found I found out to win. I, I I fight. So uh -huh. I, first round I finish in England. Then I went there. I fought the second, the first fight in England. The second one in the second week, and I managed to win that fight as well, triangle. And then the week after was like another fight that my contract said that I had to do it. Yeah. So I had to do, I had another first round submission. But then there was the finals for the tournament because I was a replacement for someone yeah. that got hurt in the tournament. Mm -hmm. 
So every week you fight someone different from another team and someone that you don't know. So then in the third week in England, and in the third week in, in, in India, and my fourth week with four different MMA fights, mm-hmm. four different opponents, you know, four different surprises, man, my body couldn't take it. I'm telling yeah. you. Look, the guy, the guy who won the fight, I, and I promise you, man, I left everything I had there. Yeah. I had yeah. nothing yeah. left. Yeah. But the guy played the game, taking me down, ground and pound a bit standing, take it down, ground and pound a bit standing. That was like, I was, I don't like to lose. Yeah. But I was yeah. like, motherfucker, how can you expect to win a fight like that? Yeah. You yeah. coming from four MMA fights in four weeks with four different people. Mm-hmm. Imagine it, cut your ways. I know that I have a lot to cut, but cut your ways and no cut. And the adrenaline, your mind was too much, but I'm yeah. pleased I don't it. Yeah, because I can pass my experience to my to my students. You know, I can go like and say, "Look, man, I done four professional MMA fights in four weeks." Yeah. Nowadays, yeah. twenty, I even say it was twenty seventeen. I think who who does that? Yeah, nobody at all. I mean, not talking nobody about that. that. Yeah, I mean, they're talking about this, was it, the, the Chimaev guy there, um, and he did, what, three fights in, I think it was a month, month and a half, something like that, but that was three fights, and that's a record in the UFC. Um, so, obviously, you, four fights in four weeks, beats that, <laughs> beats that. So Four fights in four weeks, man. Yeah. And then I lost, the, the last fight I lost, man, the light pass I lost, but, you know, like, it's part of the game, man, it's part of the yeah. game, you know? Definitely. Like um, I I am planning actually sure to do another three fights. You know, mm-hmm. like I mentioned, I had seven professional fights. I want to do three more. Yeah. But my last one I want to do in Brazil, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm willing now to to start to train MMA again because Jiu Jitsu. I'm always training, mm-hmm. and I believe in my no gi game evolved so much since my last MMA fight. Yeah, yeah. I, I do know gi, but man, I love the gi, man. I am a gi player, you know. So, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, no gi, I try neglect a bit, but I'm with the mentality now. No, I need to train no gi as much as I can, man. Yeah, I have yeah. to, you know. And I have this plan to do another three fights, man. And hopefully, I can do what I'm saying. I can do my last fight in front of my family back in Brazil, you know. Definitely, definitely. So obviously, let the family see um, exactly what you do. Um, so definitely, yeah, then... man, yeah. I fought to jujitsu in there. I fought to jujitsu in 2016. There was one UAE tournament, and actually, 11 of my students went to Brazil, went to my hometown. We all yeah. fought there. But I want to do the MMA. You no, know? I want to do the MMA. Like I have a lot of friends there. And... My family is very loud, you know, so it would be good <laughs> to, to fight and hear all of them shout for me, you know. And man, time yeah. is clicking. I am 37 years old, so I don't have much longer that I can be doing MMA. So I will yeah. try make uh, have some fight, have some matches next year for sure, man. Yeah, definitely. And then, obviously, you have, um, I mean, you were out in Fight Island recently with Cam. Um, obviously, Cam was over there fighting. So, I mean, how was Fight Island? I mean, obviously, it was a, a completely different scenario from what we've ever seen before. So, I mean, how was the experience for you? Wow. Boy, sure. All I can say is wow. Yeah. You know, UFC showed why they are the best events in the world and what they are UFC. When you get in the airport from here, just a quick uh, quick fact about Cameron. Cameron always, always want to fight the UFC. He started training with me when I got in the country, and he always had that dream to be in the UFC, and he always say that, to be in the yeah. UFC. And he always trained and lived his life as a UFC fighter, even though that he wasn't in the UFC. Mm-hmm. And all the time he had that phone call, like, look, you read, yeah, there's the card in London. The closest one was the card in London mm-hmm. before the COVID. 
And yeah. he was all set to fight there, but no with a contract sign or anything. His manager said, look, like that you take it, I take it. Can you make weight? Yeah, you can make weight. Everything that they asked you before, he was up for it. But then yeah. they closed down in the way that the event in March that was closed, isn't it? They canceled it because of the COVID. Yeah. So then he was like, ah, oh, man, no. And we had the restrictions in the country to train for a few months, so we couldn't even train. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. was doing, like, running. He was doing, like, his strength and conditioning himself. Yeah, yeah. So then, on Thursday, he got one phone call. Look, we need someone for the Fight Island to fight next week, and you up for it. He was like, fuck, yeah. Definitely, I don't yeah. care the weight, I don't care who is, I'm up for it. Yeah. And man, that's something that I like to him, and that's that's the philosophy we have in the team. You yeah. always train, you always try to make yourself as ready as possible. When the opportunity knock in your door, you're ready for it. I honestly think life gives you three opportunities. The <laughs> first one, the best one, and the last one. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's 33 years old. Who knows if that opportunity wasn't his last one? Yeah, yeah. So UFC say, look, I need you to fight bent away with a top 15 next Saturday. You up for it? That was Thursday. Mm -hmm. He was like, I'm not just up for it. I'm fuck up for it. Let's do it. So tomorrow yeah. morning, you go in London, you do your COVID test. There's two coaches that you can bring. So, and then he called me straight away, Neto, what are you doing now? We said, man, we drive to teach. Man, please, I need you to quarantine. And though we got a fight in the UFC, and man, it was like a little kid in the car. <laughs> yeah. Fucking punching yeah. the roof. <laughs> Fucking yeah, you know, because this guy. Sorry, I better press something here. This guy trained with me since day one. Yeah. I showed him how to do hip scapes. I showed him how to do bridges. And man, the guy followed his dream and he got it. He got the chance, he got the opportunity, he got the phone call. Yeah, yeah. He was 11 kilos over, 22, 23 pounds over, mm -hmm. you know, his fight weight. Plus he was, he hasn't done any MMA sparring since last year. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the odds were against him, you know, yeah. but he put all the odds away, all the excuse to not do away and he took one excuse mm -hmm. to do it so which was yeah. his dream yeah so he's done it he went there of course there wasn't the result we wanted mm -hmm. but man you can expect that when you have someone tr in the ufc training a full camp to fight and in the fight week somebody pulled down then they replace yeah. this person they, they could be ready man yeah, and you yeah. know the guy done so well, Kyle, Kyla, 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 the Matrix, nice guy, nice guy. Uh -huh. Kyla done it very good, but the 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 experience starts in the airport. Uh -huh. When you get in the airport, there's a section we flew with Etihad. There uh -huh. is a section in the airport only for the UFC. Uh -huh. When we went to the airplane, there was a section in the airplane just for the UFC. So right. three of us plus one journalist and one cut man. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That was it in one section, the entire plan, plane. Yeah. So then you get there, you have a separate section in the airport Abu Dhabi, and you have a bus that takes you to the hotel. And, and and this section, this bus, is all just for the UFC. So you drive to Ireland, there's a police block in the road where only who is in the UFC can go to the island. It's yeah. crazy, man. It's something else. It sounds like it, yeah. So then we went there. Yeah, then we went there. And then for two days, we couldn't leave the hotel room. We had yeah. to be quarantined. In the hotel room. and we done a test in london mm -hmm. the weekend then we done another test in the evening when we got there then we got another test 24 hours in total we done five tests yeah yeah covid test and then like you have a room for yourself quarantine they bring food to your door like they all with like the mask and the whole clothes, like, man, you feel like you are in sci-fi uh, movie, <laughs> you know? Um, 
so yeah, you have that two days and then, okay, you guys are of the quarantine, all of you test negative for, for COVID. Mm-hmm. You guys have free access to the hotel in the islands. And yeah. then, man, let's pick it up a bike. The, the hotel provides a bike. Let's ride to the beach. Yeah. Sure, the entire island was shot. Right, right. There is a Marriott hotel that the UFC closes the hotel. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So nobody gets seen, nobody gets out of the island if they don't have nothing to do with the UFC. Yeah. So we were riding our bikes in the middle of the road. We felt like the walking dead scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was something crazy. Then you go, you do the fight, you, you, you get ready in the hotel 90 minutes before your fight the the bus only for you take you to the fight yeah then you do your fight then you do the doctors after then you come straight back to the hotel mm-hmm. and all the meals all the food was paid by the ufc the only thing they didn't pay was the beers unfortunately so i had to pay them myself yeah you know but a part of it man everything in the way back there was another level once again because mm-hmm. They had Cameron, they had um, another two Brazilian fighters as well. They would be do a connection in mm-hmm. Heathrow to go back to Brazil. Yeah, yeah. You know, so what they done is the same journalists and the same cut men came in the same plane. This time, there was the entire, shoot, the entire plane for the UFC. Right, right. So we all were like first class and business class, and, you know, <laughs> living like celebrities, man. Like thanks to the UFC, man. Yeah. So the yeah. experience itself, you know, like was amazing. And now actually Cameron is in Abu Dhabi, he's in Dubai, he's doing training there with some of my friends that lives and teaching in Dubai for mm-hmm. two weeks. And then he flies to America because if you do a quarantine in Dubai, quarantine, yeah. no, if you are like, in Dubai, you don't need to quarantine when you get to America. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, you know, that's what him and a lot of people is actually doing as well. They they spend time in Dubai and then they fly to America with free, you know, free of uh, COVID, you know? Yeah. I mean, Cam, one of the, uh, in fact, one of the guys that was at that seminar down at Tiago's was Peter Downs. Um, I don't know if you remember Peter. Um, so Peter, when he was there, Peter's an ex-paratrooper, which obviously Cam as well. Cam, I believe, is an ex-paratrooper as well. So yeah, 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 yeah. So Peter's uh, watching, watching Cam, and Peter's telling me all about Cam and things like that. So um, because of obviously that connection with the armed services. So so yeah, I mean, Peter's very proud of obviously everything that Cam's achieved so far. Um, so because obviously that paratrooper thing, so yeah, um, yeah. so yeah, very yeah, like attached to his arm and stuff. He's ex yeah. isn't he? And the parts, yeah. yeah, so yeah, good yeah. man, good. So, but yeah, and then what about you then? What's uh, future for yourself, Valmir? Obviously, once we get out of this quarantine or once we get out of this lockdown and stuff like that. I mean, what what kind of things you mentioned about the MMA, but in regards to obviously jujitsu, what what's your future plans for yourself? Man, during this lockdown, first lockdown, I materialized my dream. Mm-hmm. I finally got my own gym, you know, yeah. and uh the gym is exactly the way how I want it, you know, and the way how I dream is a massive yeah. Met space, 271 square meters. You know, we have like a double thickness for the mat so you can throw each other on the floor. <laughs> so my goal now is just to <laughs> is just to make my gym grow, my academy grow, you know, and make more people world champions, make another world champions and make uh, help people achieve their dreams, whatever their dreams are. Yes, you know what I mean? Yes. I'm not here to judge anybody on their dreams or, or, or their lives. I'm here to help people to achieve it. You yeah. know, obviously, I always will be competing as much as I can. If there is any competition interesting and, and fights to do, I will do. But I'm willing to grow my gym. You know, mm-hmm. we have like almost 200 members already just uh, during this time, during yeah. this lockdown. So 
my plan is within a year I have at least a thousand members, and out of these thousand, eighty percent doing doing jujitsu. And yeah, man, that's my goal for now. And do whatever is the comp. If there is like a, a good challenge for us, a good challenge for myself, I will compete. I was gutted that they didn't invite me for Polaris, you know, like they <laughs> don't the squads and stuff. And now, sorry, and now I am half English. I got my citizenship as well, so I nice. could be fighting under the UK flag, you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah. obviously, I don't think that they open for people that is not sponsored by Patami or Scramble. Yeah, so I was yeah. out of that one. But if there is any any fights, any challenge, man, I'm up for it. I love competes. I love fights. And, you know, I will do that for as long as I can, brother. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, Polaris. Polaris, obviously, get you on Polaris. Grapple Fest. Grapple Fest, another one as well. So, I mean, there's a there's a number of things out Actually, there. Actually, yeah. Yeah, that was in Grapple Fest. Chris has contacted me to fight the new Water Kings. Mm -hmm. I believe it's Grapple Fest or... I believe it's Grapple Fest. Yeah, up in... Uh, yeah, no gear. Chris and Thompson, like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I said yes, but obviously... Everything happened. The main, the main event meant to be God and Ryan and someone else, but yeah. obviously with this, this, this time, this lockdown shit, uh, yeah. I'm not able to. But man, I honestly, bro, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. I feel a little bit junky as well. Like <laughs> you know, I needed that adrenaline. I needed that in my life, man. I need the competition. Yeah. I need you know like to train you with a purpose, no, just yeah. like training for maintenance, no, training yeah, for, for a purpose. And uh, yeah, man, I'm up for anything, any challenge, whenever there is one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, it's, it's been an absolute honor speaking to you, Valmir. I said, I'll, I love chatting yeah, with you. I mean, you. your 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 outlook on life and jujitsu is very, very positive. So. As I said, it's always a pleasure. Anytime I get to see you or chat with you, as I said, it's always an honor. And I, I same same as you when you were talking about uh, Rico and so on, when you speak to them, you learn. When I speak to you, I learn a lot of things as well. So so it's an oh, absolute man, honor for me. So um and then once you, once man. yeah, I mean, once we get all this over, I mean, we'll definitely be down to you because I want to come down and obviously so get some. How about how about we make it there like for everyone to see now, so we have no way back. So how about whenever this lockdown shit is over, we can train with each other. How about we do one like that, but in my gym? Yeah, yeah. Live, me and yeah. you talking. If there is anyone else, we can invite as well. But how about we do something like that? Like that, I think that would be very nice. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Speak to some of the guys as well. Speak to some of your students. Uh, uh, speak to yourself. Obviously, get a, and that's something I want to do is go around different gyms and show different gyms to people. Um, so yeah, I mean, listen, I'm up for that. If you're up for that, Valmir, let's do it. Let's do it. you know, man. You are more than welcome anytime. You don't need an invitation, you know. My house is your house. So anytime you are around me, anytime that you plan off come down south, please make sure you, you you put a day in the side to come and visit me, visit my academy. And man, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Like I mentioned before, Stuart, I don't really do this podcast or these interviews yeah. thing because I'm quite reserved unless there is for friend. And you are a friend, you know. We share the same love for jiu-jitsu, for MMA. It was an absolutely pleasure to be here. I really enjoy. Uh, I can see, like, we've been, like, talking for an hour and a half, I think, and the time went very fast. If you let me, I will speak for another hour and a half, no problem, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, uh, Poha, I, I really enjoy, I really appreciate the invitation. And I'm looking forward for us to do the next one and, you know, and for us to have the chance to train again. And I feel that pressure pass that just you knows how to do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Valbier. Well, as it's been an absolute honour. Uh, thank you very much for obviously taking time to speak with me. And uh, yes, let's now speak to you soon, Valmir.
That's it, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for being watching us. Thank you, everyone, everyone to be participating. I want to invite anyone, like, whenever this, 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 this shit is over, everyone to come up to train. I love jiu-jitsu. I love my team, but I love jiu-jitsu more than I love anything else. So anyone from any team, any jeans, are more than welcome to train, to come and do a bit of training with us and spread the love for jiu-jitsu around the world. Definitely. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you All very right. much, my brother. Have a good one, everyone. Great Sunday to you. Whoa, we'll speak to you soon. Take it easy, brother. Thank Peace. you. Valeu. Take it easy, my bro. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.